Hello, my name is Brandon Knapp, and I'm going to be doing, I guess you could consider a rereading of the uh, Loved Orphan Asami X Cora X Male Reader story created by Silver, Silver Zero Wisp. Uh, I originally did it over my phone, but the uh, thing I was trying to use to record the audio is being a dickhead, and it won't let me share it or download it at all on my computer. So this is the best thing I could do to to fix that problem without having to just go over the recording again some other way. So I'm doing it this way. Um, so anyways, <clears throat> here we go. Starting off with the, uh, no point of view. You're left in an orphanage at the age of five by your parents. Uh, you vividly remember now. Um, you're a pretty shy person, uh, but are kind and caring when you feel you can open up to people, uh, safely. Why you like this? Well, growing up in an orphanage will do that to you. You've gotten a bit better after Pema and Tenzin adopted you at the age of seven. You're 17 now, heading on to 18 soon. You got a job at Hiroshi as Hiroshi's personal assistant. She makes some money, but that changed when he revealed his true intentions. Oddly, before Hiroshi's fall, his daughter Asami took a shine to you. In fact, she helped you escape her father when she learned the truth. Be you became decent friends with everyone, though it's difficult with Mako most of the time. You watch as she broke up with Asami and got with Korra, only for them to break up. You're not one to judge, but it's hard, to n not, hard not to when he did something like that. After you noticed the two girls, Asami and Korra, seemed to gravitate towards you, you thought it was nice to have people want, that wanted to be close. Well, there's a reason for everything, and you're about to discover what that reason is. Now we're in our point of view. Korra defeated Vatu, and I couldn't be more happy for her. It seems like she she's become more confident in herself, and that makes me happy. Asami seems happy with it too, and we're celebrating back at the temple. Uh, while the others were partying, I'm not one for crowds. Too many people. I'm just chilling in my room here, looking at the temple, uh, looking at the one photo I have of my birth parents. Sometimes I just look at it and ask myself, why? Why did they leave me? Did they not want me? I suppose not. It honestly saddens me to think they didn't want me. I put the photo back up and lay on my bed to rest. Or I was going to until I got a knock on, my, on the door. I told them to enter, and I saw Asami smiling at me. Asami. Hey, I was wondering where you ran off to, Brandon, Asami said to me, smiling. I stifle a small laugh at that. Uh, she walks up closer to me. Um, not feeling the party? Asami asked me kindly. I just shrug. You you know how I am with uh, meeting people, uh, so not really. Um, I admitted to her a tad shyly. Asami merely smiles and nods her head at me. I'm sorry. Sorry. I apologize to her. Asami shakes her head at me after I say that. No, don't be. It's all right. Korra and the others were just wondering where you went, Asami said, smiling at me. I nodded my head, bef uh, and she just kept looking at me. I am reminded of what she was like after Mako left her for Korra before he and Korra broke up at the festival. So, got, Sami got pretty close to me, and I was a huge pillar of, of support for her, especially after her father showed who he was. We've been the best of friends since. Now explain to me why you were looking sad, Asami said in a bit more of a serious tone. I look at her surprised. Don't give me that look. I, you seemed upset when I walked in. Now please tell me why, Asami said in a bit of a softer tone. I sighed at that and take out the picture. Ever since I was little, ever since I was left at an orphanage, Pema and Tenzin adopted me from, this is all that I had of my parents. These are them, I assume. I don't know why I, kept, I keep it. It just makes me sad just looking at it, but I keep it. Maybe because I hope to be able to ask them why they wanted to get rid of me. I don't know. I say... I said with a sigh at the end. Asami merely frowned before she, uh, bef but quickly turned her head when she, we heard another voice. Cora's voice. Oh, maybe you think they love you somewhere deep down, Cora said, leaning on my door frame. I know you hate crowds, but I, don't, I didn't think you'd come in here and make yourself sad, Cora said gently before sitting beside me on my bed. 
I just sigh a bit. She's not wrong about me hoping that they loved me, but they just couldn't take care of me. I look at her. I know it's stupid and all. I guess it's normal for me to be curious, I said, shaking my head. Cordy is just not in agreement with Asami. I looked. I look at Cora, and she's still giving me a soft look. I'm reminded of how she comforted me when I was beyond worried about my sister I Iki when she was kidnapped. She was a huge help in calming me down when we went to get her. Now, no more moping for me, I said as I put the picture up. I know I don't like the, Fuck. I know I don't like the crowds, but you two should go have fun. I'll, I'm all right here, I said to the two, smiling a bit. They both seemed displeased with that, which made me start wondering. It's not much of a party if not all if all our if all of our friends aren't present, Brandon. I saw me said with a small smirk. I decided that as Cora laughs a small bit. Come on, Brandon. The crowd has died down. We would really, really like you to be here there. Asami, Asami said with a gentle smile. I looked at Asami and then Cora, who was nodding in agreement. Yeah, you're a member of Team Avatar, and a really good friend, so please, Cora asked me with a kind smile, I must resist. But she starts giving me an ear-begging look, so I look at Asami, who's just smiling gently at me, waiting, awaiting my answer. Crap. Fine, fine. Fine, fine. Though, if I get overwhelmed again, I'll come back here, I said, looking in between them. They both giggled, but not in agreement. All right, let me just get ready again. I'll be out in a minute, I said, standing from my bed. I stretched a bit as I stood and headed to the door. I smile at them as they look back before they leave. Heh, I'm lucky to have friends like them. Though I do wonder why they seem to gravitate to me versus Bolin or something. Not that I mind. I mean, most guys would kill to have these two beautiful girls want to be around them. Me, though, I'm happy that they like enough that they like me and give me a push when needed. Sami's point of view. I am smiling to myself. I love being around Brandon, even before Mako left me for Korra. Lately, though, I've been feeling a tad differently about him. Maybe it's the way he smiles at me or any of his friends. <clears throat> maybe it's the way he's, he... Maybe it's how he talks acts. I don't know. What do I what I do know is that I think I'm falling for him. I look at Cora who seems to be smiling at herself. I wonder why uh uh no oh no, not again. I like you, Cora, but yet Mako and you two broke up even after he left me for you. What are you smiling about? I asked in a friendly manner. Cora seems to snap out of her self induced trance and look and look at me. I raise a brown. She looks away from me, but looks a bit nervous. No reason. Just happy we can convince her friend to come back out. The party seemed less fun without us uh, leaving less fun without him there. Corey said, smiling fondly once more. She then looks at me with a small, small, uh, nervous look. What do you think? What do you think he thinks of me? Cora asked me nervously, but with hope in her eyes. I was right. She's becoming fond of. Calm down, Asami. Why don't you ask him? It's not like he'd lie to you. I asked with a raised brow. Cora blushed a small bit and looked away. I decided to call her out before we get back to the party outside. You have a crush on him, don't you? I asked, looking at Cora. She jumped a bit and was about to deny it before I crossed my arm. She sighed a bit. Mm. Okay. Maybe a small one. Cora admitted nervously. I don't do anything as she continues. I mean, he's so nice and compassionate. He's not afraid to speak his mind or let his emotions out. I think Marco started thinking I was into Brandon since I talked to him so much. Cora said, shaking her head. I'm actually a bit surprised at that. So Marco may have been jealous. That seems odd. Brandon brought up the idea uh, Marco may be a, 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 a romantic. He can love someone, but ju he just can't do all the normal relationship stuff like gifts and dates. I see, is all I said before looking back down the hall. I haven't seen him yet, so I decided to say something. Well, I'm fond of him as well, I said to Cora. She goes a bit wide-eyed. Is it that? Is it that shocking? I've known him since he started working for my dad, and he was a huge help after Mako left me for you, I said looking down the hall. He helped me out of my sadness, not to mention he's so caring and ca kind and caring for everyone, anyone he loves. It wasn't hard to fall for him, I said, looking back at Cora. She thinned her lips, but didn't look upset. More along the lines of worried, I suppose. 
What do we do? I mean, I don't want to hurt you again, and I know he would hate to hurt either of us. Cora said, looking down. I sigh a bit. She's not wrong about that. He wouldn't want to break either of our hearts, but he may be forced to. He's a smart one. If he does feel the same, he'll think of something, I said, looking down the hall. I look at Cora, and she still, lo still looks worried. I'm not upset, Cora. It happens. But until he chooses, I may pick up my charms around him, I said with a small smirk. Cora looked surprised before giving a small one back. I'll do the same then, Cora said. Sounding more confident, I chuckled before we walked back to the main area and back outside. We saw P Tenzin and Pema talking with two people we've never seen before. Is it me or does that woman have Brandon's hair color? Cora asked, looking at the woman of the two. I look a bit closer and yes, she does. The hair seems to be a shade brighter. The male seems to be about Brandon's height. Oh, oh no. Something tells me that they may be Brandon's parents, I said, as I was as I was a bit shocked. Cora looked at me wide-eyed. I guess they heard about him in the newspaper or something. Why are they here? I asked no one in particular. Their son's famous now, along with us. Now he's worth their time, Cora said, sounding upset. That thought alone pisses me off quite a bit. I hope that's not true, but if it is, I may be punching someone by the end of the night. I just hope Brandon doesn't. Cora stops as we hear someone walk up behind us. We look and see Brandon looking at us. He then glances at the couple and takes a step closer. He reaches into his pocket and pulls out that photo from before. He looks between the couple and the, and the photo. Brandon, Cora said, reaching out for him. Why are they here now? Brandon asked, sounding upset. Cora placed her hand on his arm and he looked at her. Just please stay close. This is going to be either good or bad brandon requested of us sounding a tad upset we both nodded before we all walked up to tenzin where we could hear him speaking with the couple Boop. <clears throat> why now tenzin asked sounding extremely upset he doesn't show his emotions often but here his anger is showing the man doesn't seem to have a response i hope you have answers because my son We'll want them. Tenzin said sternly to the couple. He's right, Brandon said, standing right behind the couple. <gasps> they turn around, and the woman seems more shocked than the man to see her son all grown up. Brandon simply keeps a neutral look on his face. I do have questions that I want answered. First of all, first off, what are your names? Brandon asked, looking at the couple. Both look at each other before looking back at Brandon. I'm Damien Tortuga, and this is Lala, my wife. We're your parents, Brand Damien said in a soft tone. Brand is nothing, and they seem to get that he deducted that. Ah, well, we wanted to see our son, Damien said, taking a step forward with his wife. Brandon seems to glare a small bit. Neither of you get neither of you get to call me that anymore. Denzin and Pamela raised me. Not you. Brandon said a tad angrily. The couple seems a bit surprised, but knew not argue with him. Now for the big question. Why give me up? Why not see me before, and why see me now? Brandon asked, sounding like he was holding in a lot of emotions. Uh, the couple looked at each other and seemed scared. I hope that's a good reason. I am I think I deserve that much, Brandon said, crossing his arms. Damien seemed to gulp a bit. Lala said, Lala, we we could just couldn't take care of you, Lala said, sounding nervous. That was an obvious lie, and Brandon gave her a look that he knew as much. Lala seemed to get even more nervous. Well, we saw what she did in the paper. Lala tried off as the end, at the end. Uh, as Brandon seemed shocked and hurt, I am, however, beyond, I am, however, beyond, I, however, am beyond angry. It's not. Damon doesn't get to continue as Brandon looks to be on the verge of crying. Pema walks over to her side and pulls him into an embrace as she cradles his head to calm him down. Tenzin looks angry, but doesn't. But that can help pales in comparison to me. How me, Cora, Bolin, and Mako all look. So what? You wanted to see him because he's famous now? I shouted angrily. The couple looks at me surprised. You never even answer his question, you bastards! I shouted again. I'm ready to throw down, but Brandon's voice stops me. Let them answer, Brandon said, pulling out of Pema's embrace. He looked at the couple. Damien and Lala looked at each other before sighing. The two, this better be good, or I may end up beating someone tonight. We are scared, okay? 
But Damon says he looked at Brandon. We weren't ready to give up our freedom and raise a child. We were scared that our lives would change too fast, Damien said, seriously. He's not lying, and to be honest, that excuse pisses me off all the more. All the more. So what did you expect to happen when you had a child? Hmm? Did you expect everything to stay the same until the last minute? Or were you both so selfish that giving up a child after five years with you was acceptable so you two could be free again? Judging by your clothes, money was not, not was no object, Tenzin said angrily to the couple. The couple had no response to the accusation. People like you make me sick. Four years, my son, my son, wondered why you left him. Only to discover it's because you both are just selfish. That makes me so, ugh, Pema said, sounding even more angry than Tenzin. She was about to continue, but Brand stopped her. You were scared? Do you know how scared I was when, I, when people that I thought were supposed to protect me left me in that place? Or how often I cried at night wondering why I didn't have a family? If it weren't for my real mother and father, I would have likely fallen into a life of depression thanks to you two. Brandon says a single tear rolled down his face. He then pulled out the photo. This was all you left me after abandoning me, Brandon says. He looked at it. The only connection to a life I barely remember, Brandon said as he looked at the, looking at the picture some more. He then sneered a bit before ripping into four pieces. It was a guy to find you and ask you and ask why you did what you did. Now I'm my answer, and I'm done, Brandon said, looking at the couple. Both seemed surprised, but they didn't really respond for a bit. Pema continued rubbing her son's back. We'll need to go. Well, we need to go, Damien said, looking around at everyone's glare. They were saying to the couple. Lala agreed. We'll do anything to make this up to you, Damien said, looking at Brandon. Brandon's face simply goes neutral before replying. Sure. Goodbye, Damien. Brandon said flatly to the man. The man and woman seemed more surprised. Seem even more surprised, but say nothing and begin leaving. Brandon stands there, watching him leave as his breath sounds heavy. He's holding in a lot of emotions. Once they're out of sight, Tenzin tries to speak, but Brandon speaks instead. Maybe it's better this way. Don't need them putting their noses where they don't belong. Brandon said, trying to sound happy, but failed due to his voice shaking. Son, it's all right to be angry, Tenzin said, trying to comfort his son. Brandon's, uh, Brandon looks at him, smiling, but you can see the hurt in his eyes, especially as Tenzin gets closer to him. Brandon shakes his head no. Why should I be mad, Dad? At least they said goodbye this time. I just wish I didn't waste my time thinking about them. Brandon said before kicking the now shredded picture into the wind. Tenzin tries to speak again. No, it's all right, Dad. I have done a lot without them. I learned how to fight hand-to-hand -hand without them, and I got pretty good at it, didn't I, Dad? Brandon asked Tenzin, who just nodded and agreed. I learned how to drive without them. I learned how to shave, went on my first date, uh, and got through school without them. I had 12 great birthdays without them, 10 of which were with you, Mom, and my siblings, and never even sent me so much as a damn card. To hell with them, Brandon yelled angry, looking down the steps. He takes a shaky breath as Tenzin tries to reach out for him again. Reach, tends, tries to reach for him again. I don't need them then. I don't need them now, Brandon said, walking around his father. I'm on the verge of tears watching this unfold. And I can tell Pema is fallen crying watching her son lose it. Mako's looking down, frowning as Cora tries to hold strong just like Tenzin. Tenzin tried to speak again, but Brandon stopped him. Don't apologize, Dad. I'm going to get through advanced schooling without them. I'm going to get a great job. They'll make you and Mom proud without them. I'm going to marry me a beautiful girlfriend and have a whole bunch of kids. And I'm sure, and I sure as hell don't need them for that because there's a damn thing they could teach me about how to love my kids, Brandon said, standing in front of Tenzin, shouting. Tenzin merely looks at his son, frowning, before Brandon's lip trembles and a sob escapes his throat. Why didn't they love me, Dad? Brandon asked before sobbing again and again. Ten Tenzin wastes no time hugging his son tightly as Brandon hugs him back. Pema, who's still crying, walks up behind her son and hugs him from there as everything in the air went still, short, went still, short of the eldest son crying in his father's and mother's arms. I'm crying now, and so is Bolin. Mako tries to hug him to try and look strong, but I can see he's upset too. Cora hugs me to comfort me, but she's not much better than I am. The air was silent at night, sure of the sobs of a boy whose deepest hopes were crushed before his eyes. I stayed the night at my request so I could be there if he breaks down crying again, which not surprisingly did happen. It happened just as I knocked on his door to talk to him. I rushed in, saw him sitting on his bed with his head in his hands as he cried. 
I just next to him and pulled him into a hug. He didn't fight it as I held him. This is so stupid. I don't know why I ca- I don't even know why I care so much. Brand said, still crying in my arms. I shush him and continue rubbing his back to try and calm him down. It's natural to be upset. You hoped that they gave you up because they knew they couldn't take proper care of you, but you learned that wasn't the truth. I said to him softly as he continued to cry, just know we're all here for you. Marco, Bolin, Cora, me, your siblings, and your parents are here for you. You're not alone here. I said to him softly once more as I continued to hold him. We, he just held on to me tightly until the door opened to reveal Cora, who's in her PJs. I heard crying and was worried, Cora explained, before sitting on the other side of him. She began to rub his back to comfort him. I'm not good, really good with this kind of stuff, but I can go hit him if you want, Cora joked, smiling. I felt Brennan weakly chuckle at that, though he still is upset. Yay, I got him to laugh a bit, Cora said, smiling. Brennan then pulled away from me and looked at Cora. She thins her lips at him. It's okay to be upset, you know. I would be too if I were you, Cora said to him gently, rubbing his arm. Brandon merely sighs. The Sami said the same. So did mom and dad. It's just... Brandon sighs again. I guess even though I accepted the idea that they may have just seen me as a mistake and got rid of me, I hope that deep down they had to love me somewhere. It seemed like it should be natural, but... But... Brandon's eyes widen welled up with more tears. I was just a burden to them, Brandon says as more tears rolls down his face. Cora frowns at him before I pull him back into my arms. I just wanted the truth. I guess I got it, Brandon says. He silently cried. I rest my hand on his chin, uh, my chin on his head as Cora sues closer to rub his back better. Doesn't make it better, though. We all love you, though. That won't change. Cora just said to him gently as I nodded in agreement with her. She's right. Now... I whispered to him gently, you can let it go. I whispered, him gen- uh, I whispered to him gently. Brandon would breathe in shakily before tightening his grip on me. Me and Cora are here. We're not going anywhere. I whispered to him as he continued to cry silently into me. I, look at, I looked at Cora and nodded, and she joined in the hug by wrapping her arms around his torso and rested her head on his back. We sat there in silence as he cr- silently cried into my shoulder. Every time a sob escapes his throat, despite his best efforts to stuff it down, breaks my heart a little. My heart breaks a little. Seeing someone I care so much about, someone so happy, caring, and kind, being so upset, even though he has every right to be this way, hurts me. Especially since I can't help all that much. Judging by Cora's facial expression, she feels much the same as her frown deepens for a bit when he sobs. We stay there for a bit until his breathing evens out. I'll pull, I pull back slightly and see he's asleep now. I try to pull away to tuck him in, but it was gripped tight in his sleep. His mind seems comfort, and you know what? I'm going to give it to him. Cora pulled back and helped me get him situated in bed with, in my, in, with, in bed with myself. His grip loosens a bit when we get on our sides while we lay on his pillows. I adjust slightly to get comfy before looking at Cora standing there looking worried still. I think for a moment then get an idea. Come on, Cora. I said, patting the other side of the bed behind Brandon. I know you're worried too, I said with a gentle smile. Cora nodded and turned off the light. She climbed under the bit, under the covers, and, fe- and I felt her arms wrap around his mixed section. She's still looking worried. I'm worried too, Cora. This hurt him more than anything I think could have. We'll just have to be there for him. I whispered to her. Cora nodded in agreement before thinking about something. What about the thing, Cora asked me, still looking worried. Ah, she mean, must mean our feelings for him. I don't want it to seem like we're manipulating his saddened state. What do we do, Cora said, asked, looking at the sleeping Brandon. We'll just have to wait. His, mo- his emotions are much more important than that. I said to Cora as I felt Brandon nuzzle into me in his sleep. I then smiled a bit. You got him to laugh, at least. It means he's not too far into his sadness. I said, smiling at Cora, who smiled and seemed a tad bashful. Well, thanks. I'm just glad I could help him. What about you? You're pretty good at comforting people. Then again, you were like that when we met. Corey said, smiling at me. I smiled at that. What a pair we make, I joked, which made both of us laugh quietly. Cora got comfy in her spot and closed her eyes. I followed suit just listening to Brandon's calm breaths. I just hope we all can help him through this. He doesn't deserve this. Time skip. Our point of view. I begin to wake up from an interesting dream. I got married to two people. I can't quite remember who they who they were, but I do know I felt happy, and they seem happy too. I just wish I could remember the faces. I adjust slightly in my spot and tighten my grip on what I'm holding. Whatever it is, it's nice and warm. 
I can also feel something wrapped around me. I feel all warm and happy until I felt something slowly moving. It's like a breath. I then hear two people breathing and open my eyes. I only be met with a sounding sleeping face as she holds me and I hold and I hold her. I try to stay calm as I look behind me and to see who's holding me from there. I see Cora's sleeping face and I feel my face heat up as I lay there. Oh my goodness. Two of my best friends, two of the most beautiful women ever are in bed holding me as they sleep. Why would... Wait. I remember... I fell asleep after crying last night. Uh, crying last night, um, I feel myself frown at the realization. So I guess they stayed because they were worried. I would have thought about it some more, but her Osami oh, groaned a bit. I guess she's waking up. I look and see just that see just that her eyes are slowly open to reveal those beautiful green emeralds I admire so much. They hold so much confidence in them. I wish I had that. Maybe I would have. I don't get to dwell on that as Asami speaks up. Good morning, Brandon, Asami said before letting me go and stretching. That woke Cora up as I felt her grip tightening on me, which made Asami tiredly giggle at that. Cora, Asami said quietly, shaking her head while I blushed like crazy as a fear pressed against my back. Five more minutes, Cora said before yawning and continuing to hold me. I say nothing before I felt. Uh, Cora nuzzled into me, making me blush like mad. Nice and warm, Cora said, sounding tired. Asami giggled a small bit. Cora, he's going to overheat from that blush you're giving him, Asami said, sitting straight up. Cora groans before letting me go and sitting up. I hear Cora yawn as I lay there, trying to calm down a bit. Sorry, Cora, I've never been with... I mean, I mean... I tried to get the words out, but I was just too nervous. Cora merely tiredly chuckled and rubbed my head with her hand, which oddly did help me calm down a little bit. Sorry, I was just too comfy, Cora said to me gently, though gently, though she still sounded tired. We then all caught the whiff of breakfast and seemed to brighten and she seemed to brighten up. Food. Alright, I'm getting up, Cora said before I let her go get out of bed out of bed. I sit up and finally look at the two as they slip on their slippers. Um, I stuttered to get their attention. Thanks for last night and whatnot. It helped me, so thank you, I said to them, smiling a bit. They both smiled before hugging me gently. I hugged back happily at, until they pulled away. We were happy to help. If you never, ever need anything, you know where to find us, Asami said to me gently. Cora and I in agreement, I smiled. Now we're gonna go get breakfast. You're gonna come. You come out when you're ready. All right. That's how he said. Press me tightly. I nodded again, and they both left my room. As I watched them do so, I couldn't help but think to myself: Ever since I met them, I became good friends with both Asami through her father and Cora through mom and dad. Obviously, Asami was easy to be friends with due to her kindness, and Cora was just way too friendly not to like. I have feelings for both of them in some way, I think. I may have been, I may have been on a date, but what I feel is with these two is nothing like it was with that actress. I just, if I had to choose, I don't know who I'd pick. That's assuming they even like me that way. Although they don't. Who would like a shy guy like me? I shake my head and stand. I stretch and slip my sli- on my slippers before heading to the dining area where I can hear some people chatting. Once I enter, I see my siblings, Asami, Cora, Mom, and Dad there. Cora is chatting with Janora, and Mom is serving food. She turns around and sees me. She smiles. Your food is on the table, sweetie, Mom said to me, smiling. Uh, I just stare at her for a moment, and then she and she looks concerned. Son, what's eep? Mom doesn't get to finish, ask her question. As I hug her gently, she hugs back quickly. I love you, Mom, I said to her a tad quietly. I pull back a bit, and she smiles more at me. You know that I love you and Dad both, right? I ask not to refer to what happened. A friend of my siblings, Mom smiled at me. Of course we do, sweetie. Nothing will ever make us doubt that, Mom said to me, petting my head. I smiled more at that as Dad came to stand beside her. We hugged each other briefly. You handled that well. Even your outburst was directed at them and not the people around you. We're proud of you, Dad said to me, smiling. I smiled a bit more before I felt two small people climb to my shoulders. I look and I see Iki and Milo smiling at me. You love us too, right, big brother? Miki asked me, smiling. I chuckled and used my free hand to pick her up, which she giggled at. I put I put her and then Milo down before gesturing for Janora to come over. She's smiling, and I hugged the three of them. 
of course I love you guys. Never doubt that, no matter what anyone uh no matter what anyone says, all right? I asked before pulling back to be met with the smiling faces of my siblings. They each nod, smiling at me. Mila did a small salute with Iki and Janora. You can count on us. I love you, too. That, that's really cute. The three of them said at the same time. They looked at each other in surprise. They all started laughing, which made me chuckle. I took Rohan gently from Mom so she could focus before I sat down with everyone. I smiled at Cora and Asami, who smiled back. Though I noticed a small blush on their faces. Maybe I'm seeing things. It's been a few weeks since I met Damien and Lala. It still hurts, but knowing I have good friends and a loving family makes it much easier to deal with. My family has been paying a bit more attention to me than before in order to make sure I'm alright. I really appreciate it, to be honest. Uh, I really appreciate it, to be honest. Cora and Osami have been pretty close to me, too. Though, there have been several times where they both have made me a nervous wreck. Both of them either enjoy making me into a stuttering idiot, or they don't know what they're doing. Maybe it's some elaborate scheme to make me faint. I remember that day I went, I spent with Asami as her assistant. Flashback. Me and Asami are currently in our office sorting through some papers. After the help, since I like being organized, and Dad is training some new airbenders, and I don't want to get in the way. Or be launched into a wall again like how Milo did to me when he first began learning. After I finished my uh, files, I looked to Asami to see her fanning herself. To be fair, it's stupid hot in here, and it, but, and, but it is the middle of the summer. Asami looks at me. It's hot, Asami said as she continued fanning herself. Uh, I nod in agreement and thought about taking out my shirt since I'm wearing it. I have a tank top underneath, but I don't want to make Asami uncomfortable. So I decided to uh, ask. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm wearing a tank top under my shirt, so can I take it off? I asked Asami a tad nervously. I swear I saw a grin cross her face for a split second, but waved it off as my imagination. She looked at me and nodded as I took my shirt off, revealing my tank top. So that's what it feels like to take a sock on, take off a sock on your chest. I said, looking at my shirt as the air hits me. I look at Asami and see her staring. Asami, you, you okay? I asked a tad nervous, since it's obvious she's staring at me. She snaps out of her trance and nods her head, smiling. Yes, I just wasn't expecting you to look so... Asami trailed off as she looked me up and down. I feel extremely nervous under her judging gaze. Fit. You look pretty skinny in the clothes you wear, Asami said before her eyes met mine. I look away a bit. I just like being comfortable so I get a bit a size bigger than I actually need, I asked. I explained nervously. As I still felt her eyes... Felt her eyes on on me. I look at her and see her unbuttoning her own shirt. I get extremely flustered. What what are are you, you doing? I asked a bit louder than I meant to. A sound fish on doing a shirt to reveal a tank top and a bit more of her figure. I turned my eyes away and tried to get back to working. Much better, is all Asami said as she sighed with relief. Uh, what's wrong? You seem nervous. Asami asked me in a caring tone, but I swear there was something underneath it that wasn't normal for her. Um, I just don't want to stare, I, I said, looking at her back, looking back at her. I didn't realize that's how that sounded. I turned around to see her raising her eyebrow. I mean, I don't want to be that guy that ogles girls. Not that I was staring. I mean, I did for a moment. Wait, I mean, the sound begins giggling at my flustered state, and I turn my head away from her. Do you have any idea how cute you are when you're flustered? Asami said, giggling still. I felt my he face heat up a lot. I don't know if she's teasing me. No, if she's teasing me, but I'll never, I've never really been called cute before by anyone. But mom, and she does in a baby talk esque way, even at my age. I'll never go away, will it? I heard a sound you got closer to me. I look at her without turning my head and see she has a small smirk on her face. I know you wouldn't ogle me, Brandon. Though, a sound said before taking a step closer to me, I look at her and she cuts my cheek with one hand. You just have to ask, a sound said with a smirk. I go wide-eyed before realizing she's teasing me, and I frown as she laughs a bit. Sorry, but you made that too easy, Asami said, still laughing. Not funny. I'm not used to that stuff, I said, looking away from her. The laughing stops. Not even that one girl I went on that date with said I was cute or anything, I said, still looking away from Asami. Brandon, Asami says in a very caring tone, which gets me to look at her. I wasn't teasing about that. You are cute and very handsome. I'm sorry I took it too. I took it so far. Asami said in a genuinely caring tone. I just sigh a bit and nod my head. I don't mean mean to be a downer about it. Stuff like that, just like that, like that, just makes me so nervous. I said as my nervousness began to fade. 
But Sami merely smiles and hugs me gently, which I happily return. She pulls back, still smiling gently. It's all right, Sami said gently. I smiled a bit as she stepped back. Though if anyone's going to ogle me, at least you wouldn't wolf whistle. Asami said with a giggle as my face heated up a bit again. And and I think any late woman would be lucky to have a guy like you. Asami said to me gently once more. Out of everything she has said today, that makes me the most nervous. And yet, she also makes me smile like a buffoon. Asami giggles. Keep smiling. It's cute. Asami said before turning to her look. I swear, I'm about to pass out from my nervousness right now. Yet I'm smiling like an idiot. This woman's going to be the death of me one day. I know that's true. Especially right now, I went to ask something, and she happened to be stretching. I turned down d deep red and just went back to work. God help me. End of the flashback. I shook my head at the memory as I sit here. Jeez, I thought I was going to die that day. Asami just knows what buttons to push to make me a nervous wreck. Though the memory of her saying anyone would be lucky to have me runs through my head and makes me smile, I wonder if she counts herself among them. Or she considers Cora among them. Cora, she made me nervous, a nervous wreck on accident, but she played it like it was a damn fiddle and she was a 30-year pro fiddle player. I placed my head in my hands and think back to that day. Another flashback. I'm in the kitchen eating lunch with my siblings as we're chatting a bit. While well, Milo and Niki are, are, ask, are going on about that new airbender we found and how training him was so much fun. I just smile at them as I listen intently. It's odd how they get into it. Gennaro, Gennaro did mention that she hadn't seen Cora all day, considering the training session she had yesterday. I'm not surprised. I wasn't going to comment much until mo uh, Mom walked in. Brandon, can you go check on Cora? I'm a bit worried about how tired she must be. Mom asked for me kindly. I smiled and stood up. I kissed Mom's cheek after cleaning my face with a towel. Mom just smiled. Sure, Mom. I'll be right back, I said before leaving the kitchen. And in the chorus room, I'm banging myself that she's just asleep since she's so damn tired from yesterday, but I don't know for certain. Uh, I walk down the hall to head, that heads to, that's headed to chorus room and don't hear her snoring. Maybe she's having a small nap then. Not that I blame her, I suppose. She did get her butt handed to her by dad in a small duel yesterday. I told her she wasn't ready, but she, but what do I know? I just live with the guy. I chuckle with my thought as I stand in front of chorus room door. I knock a few times and wait for a response and receive none. I knock again and once again I, I'm only met with silence. I get a bit worried and decide against my better judgment to open the door to see if she's just asleep. But I end up freezing staring at Cora wide-eyed as she just stands there looking at me. She has a rather flat face in her shirt in her hands. She stand, she's standing there in her pants and undergarments. Her upper body is exposed, short of her chest, which I silently, silently think whatever gods are listening for. I can see her well-toned. Uh, I can see her well-toned arms in all their glory. I can see her midriff and part of her back. She has a noticeable six-pack, and her back muscles seem to be well-toned. I stand there, frozen like a kid who just got caught lying before it clicks. I'm staring at Cora, who's shirtless, short of the thing covering her chest, and she is standing, right, staring right back. I quickly back out of, out of the room and slam the door shut. Oh my god, I'm so sorry you didn't answer and I got worried. I shouted through the door. Before she can reply, I gun it down the hall as fast as I can. I grab my staff in my room before running back to the kitchen, looking scared to death. I see mom and dad there now and they seem worried. Sweetie, what happened? Mom said, asked as she stood up quickly. I tried to reply, but nonsense comes out, so I have to take a few breaths before replying fully. I began a response for Cora when I knocked, so I got worried and I walked in. She was getting dressed, and I didn't and hadn't put her shirt on yet. I'm so dead, I said, looking at Mom. She's a bit surprised. I didn't look at my staff. I handed it to my dad and pointed to my head. Hit me as hard as you can. It'll be quicker than, than what she will do, I said a tad frantically. Mom and Dad just bo both just chuckled at my nervousness, which just made it worse. What? I'm serious, I said I was I was so nervous and frantic. Dad just pointed and I froze up. Not what I expected to wake up to, Cora said behind me. I don't t dare turn around and close my eyes tightly, waiting for whatever she's going to do to me. Brandon, or Cora, sorry, Cora just chuckled. Relax, Brandon. I'm not going to hurt you. I know it was an accident. I, I should have replied, but I was tired and didn't think, Cora said to me nicely from behind. I slowly and nervously turn around and see her smiling a bit at me. Nice to know you care, though, Cora said with a small smirk before sitting down. My siblings all laugh at me as they sit down and face plant the table. I don't. I didn't mutter a word through the rest of lunch. S small time skip. 
I've been avoiding Cora since the debacle at lunch. Janora did tell me Cora was looking around for me since she wants to talk to me. I still haven't saw her out, and I'm just sitting in my room. I got the day off, but told no one so Cora doesn't know I'm here. Unless Janora turns into a tiny traitor. I'm currently reading a book, but to my surprise, again, knock on the door. I had they replying, thinking it could be Cora, and I was right on the money. I know you're in there, Brandon. Your sister told me as much, Cora said, sounding confident. Little rats, I'll get them back for this. I'm not mad, Brandon. I just want to talk. Cora said, sounding a bit more gentle. I sigh. Fine, come on in. I said, putting my bookmark in my book. The door opens as I put my book back, put, put my book up, and I see Cora looking at me. Smiling gently. Hey, you kind of disappeared on me. Did you really th actually think I would hurt you for an accident? Cora asked with a, a raised brow. I look away and nod my head a small bit, which gets her to, just gets her to chuckle. I know you pretty well, Brandon. You'd never ogle me intentionally. You were worried and I was tired and stupid. It was a recipe for disaster. Cora said uh, kindly before plopping down my bed. No, I wouldn't. I maybe thought you were sick or something and you couldn't answer me. I looked. I admitted, looking at my lap. Glad you're not, though, I said with a small smile. I smiled. I looked at Cor Cora, and she's smiling right back. Though I'll be honest and say, you are fit as all can be. It's kind of hard to tell with your clothes since they're pretty thick like mine, I said, smiling a bit at Cora. I swear I saw her blush a tad before smiling with pride. Well, thank you. Glad you think so, Cora said with a small amount of pride and much happiness in her voice. I just nodded, and she seemed to start thinking. I didn't see a small smirk begin to grace her face. I tilt my head. She seems to lean forward a small bit, towards me a small bit. Though it does make me wonder if Cora didn't learn lean much closer to me, which made me blush like a madman. If you enjoyed the view even a little bit, Cora asked me in a flirty tone of voice with that small smirk on her face. I feel my face ex heat up extremely as I try to answer. Oh, yes, I, I mean, no, I mean, yes, and no, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, I can't really form a coherent sentence as I look at Cora, who's, she's still, who, who's still giving me a small smirk on as my brain just shuts down and try, try to try and restart like a damn sold car. It's all right if you did. It's perfectly natural, you know, and I don't mind if it's you that looks, Cora said it in that same tone of voice. I take a sharp breath. As she gently rubs my arm, I feel like I'm about to pass out. But I have until she starts laughing. She begins laughing. You should have seen your face, Cora says as she laughs. I breathe out shakily and fall back on my bed as Cora laugh Cora's laughter fills the air. You didn't think I would tease you about it, did you? Come on, you know me better than that, Cora said, smiling as she shoved my arm a bit. I groan slightly. She chuckles at me. I thought I was about to pass out. Jeez, Cora, I'm not used to that stuff, I said, not to sit up. Cora just laughs a small bit as it more as I shake my head. Cora then lays down on my bed next to lays back on my bed next to me. I know it was too easy. Cora said, still laughing a small bit. I opened my eyes a small bit. You know that you had to know this was coming. Cora stated in a cocky tone. I groan, but damn it, she's not wrong in the slightest. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll take that over the pain. I said, shaking my head. Cora chuckled again. And I sighed a bit. But I am sorry for barging in. I wasn't thinking, I said honestly as I looked at Cora. She just shrugged, rushing her arms behind her head. No big deal. Just expect me to tease you about it for a while, Cora said, smiling. I nod my head and breathed a sigh of relief. To be honest, though, it's nice to know that you just jump in to help if you thought I needed it, Cora said as she looked at me. I sat up looking at her and she followed suit. Well, most people wouldn't have risked what could have happened, in this case, seeing me half naked. Cora said with a playful shove with her elbow. So knowing you charge in head first is nice to know. It shows how good of a person you are, even if it was weird for you. Cora said to me um, with a gentle smile. I feel myself blush a bit. She didn't hug me, which made it a tad worse, but I return it. When she pulls back and smiles again, now stop hiding and come on. Asami should be here soon, Cora said, standing up. I do the same and begin to follow her out. She's going to be the death of me. She teases me like that again. Then again, it could be worse. Um, well, definitely, it definitely could be a lot worse, I suppose. <laughs> um, she didn't say barging in against my better judgment since I was worried show, and showed how nice I am, I guess. It's odd logic, but not wrong, I suppose. Gods. Gods between this and what Asami did, you may need to vanish for a few days. But between Cora saying I'm good looking and nice and, and Sami saying the same, I wonder if they like me. No, no, they wouldn't. Mako and I are complete opposites. 
He's confident, serious, and straightforward. I'm shy, happy, go lucky, and tend to be nice. They couldn't be into a guy like me. I sigh quietly as I continue to fall car out, ending the flashback. And vanish. Well, not vanish, but I have been avoiding them a little bit. Cora kept on teasing me, even if Asami was there. And after Cora explained what happened, Asami's right there with her. Especially after Asami told Cora uh, I was, and I quote, well fit under that shirt. I shake my head at the thought. I swear, they were going, they were doing this on purpose. Though I do appreciate the two of them. They've been a help to me when thoughts of my birth parents came up. Still, all the teasing is bothering me. Maybe I should tell them. I don't know. That was until I heard a gentle n- knock on my door. Assuming it was my, it was Janora, one of my other siblings, I said, come in. But it was Asami and Cora, both that had walked in, and it seemed a tad upset at something. Brandon, we need to talk. Asami said a bit sternly. That makes me nervous. The last time said this, someone said this was the time I dated that girl. She wanted to tell me it couldn't work out. Which is fair enough, but it still hurt. I kind of liked her. I nod, and they sit down. Now, why have you been avoiding us? Asami asked me, nervous, uh, nervous, seriously. I sigh, but don't even try and deny it. All the flirt, teasing and flirting, like, I get it, it's funny to you two and all, but it's making me a, comfort- a bit uncomfortable, I said to them, honestly, while looking at my lap. No one has ever really, you know, flirted or teased me that way before. It's just weird for me, I said. I finished off with a sigh. To be honest, it did make me feel weird, but part of me wanted it to be true. Like, maybe they do find me attractive or whatever, but I doubt that's true. I see. Mm. Asami said, sounding a bit surprised. I don't reply, but I see. I can safely bet she was thinking, why didn't you just tell us? We would have stopped if you asked. Asami said, placing her hand on my back. I sighed and looked at the ceiling before looking at her and Cora. Because you two have helped me a lot since I met my birth parents. I wanted to try and put up with it so you two could have some fun, but it's just, I don't finish as I sigh at the end and shake my head. We don't help you expecting something back, Brandon. We just like seeing you blush, but we didn't think it upset you. The teasing, I mean. Cora said, sounding regretful. Great. Now I feel like a dick. I'm sorry it upset me. Don't feel bad. It's it, it's just, I hesitate saying what I was thinking right now. I don't finish inside of it. Just try and dial it back a bit. I'll be fine, I promise, I said with a fake smile. None of them seemed to buy it. What, I asked them. What were you going to say? You seem to be thinking about something else. Asami asked me a bit sternly like before. I look away from the two and don't say anything. Asami rubs my back again and her tone softens as she speaks again. We won't judge you, I promise, Asami said gently. Yeah, unless you like murdered someone or something, or for no reason. Cora joked a bit. Which actually got me to chuckle a tad. Now come on, what's on your mind? Cora asked me gently. I sighed again before speaking. Well, I just, with all the flirting, I can't help but wonder. I take a breath to calm my nerves. They both wait patiently for me to speak once more. I can't help but wonder if it's possible that you both like me. I know it's stupid and it is just a thought I had. And I stopped talking as Asami placed a finger on my lips. It's fine, Brandon, and to be honest, Asami looked at Cora, who just not who nodded with a gentle smile. Asami looked back at me and her eyes seemed one former somehow. We both do like you in a romantic way, Asami said a bit nervously. I go wide and feel my face heat up a lot. No way. Yeah, I kind of gained a crush on you after the festival, just seeing you so happy and and whatnot was something I admired, Cora said nervously, looking uh looking away. I just sit there in sudden silence. No way. They both, oh no, that means one of them is going to be sad. I don't want to hurt them. But how? Why Why me? I'm the shyest guy you've ever met. Considering Mako is the polar opposite and all, I said. I was still trying to process what they said. Cora and Asami smiled a bit. Well, you're so happy and kind. You're such a huge help when Mako left me and my dad showed us what he truly was. It was hard, but you made it so much easier than it could have been. You made it so easy to fall for you. Asami said in a loving tone. I looked at his son facing it in a look of surprise. Yeah, that sums up what, what I have to say. Except for me, it's your willingness to help everyone. Like, it, me in my times of doubt and whatnot. Hell, he even got me out of the portal when we thought Vato killed Rava. It was just easy, Cora said in a similar tone as Asami used. I sit there and process this, but I don't know what to do. Do you like us too? Cora asked me, hopefully. I went to that I do, but I, I do. I admitted, though it was slightly sad, both of them looked worried. You both accepted me as is and then tried to change me like many people have. You both helped me out of my shell and showed me nothing but kindness. I admired you both and it would be lying if I didn't say I have feelings for you too, but 
I trailed out to take a breath. I don't want to hurt either of you, I said a bit quietly. The air in the room was silent until I felt someone call on my bed and send my other side. We talked about this being a possibility and came, and came to an agreement. As Tommy said, looking at Cora, I looked back and saw her nodding. We decided that the three that we three could be a couple together as a couple of sorts. Sure, it may take up time for me and Cora to bond like that, but I'm sure we could if you're okay with it. As Tommy said a bit nervously. Yeah, we're okay with it, but we don't want to force anything on you. Cora said to me gently. I looked between the two before um, a few times before thinking. This wait the dream I was with two people. Is it possible? I take a breath and think. Yes, I love them. Yes, I would love to be with them. The only downside is if then they may never come to love one another. And again, they could. I didn't smile a bit. I feel so lucky right now. I'm okay with it too, I said a bit quietly as my smile grew. They both smiled more at that. It may seem selfish to others, but I would love to be with the two of you. I mean, if I can be a shy, nervous potato at times, I joked, which got them to giggle before they got closer to me. But if you two can't come can't come to have feelings for each other, we'll need to be prepared, I said. Look at the two who just not in agreement. Now what do we do? I've never been with anyone really, I said as they trailed off at the end. Ever so sweet and innocent, Brandon. Asami said she cut my cheek with her now bare hand. What would follow is a kiss. Have you ever kissed some, someone, Brandon? Uh, Asami asked me sweetly. I blushed deeply and shook my head no. Asami smiles a bit more. Come here, Asami said in a, in a whisper as she leaned in. I was about to speak, but she just leaned in and kissed me gently, which I gasped and surprised that. It was, a gentle, it was gentle, sweet, and romantic. I closed my eyes and sink into it. It's not heated or anything, since I'm way too flushed to even attempt that, but it is full of love. After a moment, Asami pulls away. There, your first kiss, Asami whispered to me. I just smile. I love you, Asami said to me lovingly before she kissed my cheek. I was about to reply before Asami stopped me. Not yet, Asami says, as she pointed behind me. I turned to Cora and saw her smiling at me. That was cute, Cora said, smiling. I look away nervously, which just which makes Cora laugh a bit. Just kissed a girl and you're sure nervous about compliments you get. Man, you're cute, Cora said to me lovingly, and she stopped laughing. She then wrapped her arms around my neck before her smile changed to a more gentle one. Now kiss me, Cora said, before leaning in and kissing me a bit more roughly than Asami did, which took me by a bit of surprise, but not as much as Asami's. I nervously wrapped my arms around her waist as I return it. She doesn't get heated, likely for the same reason Asami didn't. Cora is more passionate than Asami, but again, I can feel the love coming from her. Um, Cora, let's go after some time and smiles at me. That was nice, Cora said to me with love. I can't fight the f smile anymore, and it completely takes over my face. I love you too, and I love you, Asami, I said as I looked at each of them. I tried to make sure love was in my voice, and judging by the fact they both blush a bit, I succeeded. I know I'm a nervous and shy person, but I'll try to be a good boyfriend to you both. You'll just have to try and teach me a couple. You'll just have to teach me a couple of things. I said, with a loving smile. Both girls returned it before hugging me from both sides. Oh, we know you will. You're far too kind for anything else. Sami said to me lovingly. She kissed my cheek as did Cora before they pulled away. And don't worry, me and Cora will teach you can teach you a few things about it, dating if it's needed. I doubt it will be though. Cora, as Sami said with a loving smile, I smile more. Agreed. You're stupid amounts of kind. Odds are, you'll be a natural, Cora said with a loving smile as well. I just smile brightly at that, and that makes Sasami giggle as Cora shakes her head. There's the happy Brandon we know and love, Cora said to me lovingly. I smile right back. Now, we've had a long, a long day, so why don't we cuddle, Cora asked, looking at me and Sami. I blush at the idea, but like it. I look at Sami, who's already nodding. I like that idea, Sami said, smiling. I smiled more before laying down on my bed, first on my back. Asami followed suit on my left. As she was comfy, she laid her head on my chest and laid a hand. She smiled, sighed happily as Cora did the same on my right. I shyly wrapped my arms around each of them. It feels nice to finally, feels nice to finally do this, Asami said happily. I love you, Brandon, Asami said to me lovingly. She leaned up and gave me a quick kiss on the lips before lying back down. Yeah, you're like a big pillow, Cora jokes. I chuckled before she leaned up and kissed me like Asami did. I love you, Cora said lovingly before laying back down on my chest. I couldn't help but f smile and feel a tad emotional. I love you both too. I'll be a good boyfriend, I promise, I said to them lovingly. They hummed away before we just sat there idly chatting away. I feel like the happiest man in the world. Anyways, uh, there's a lot more to read, but that's all I'm going to read for now. And that is the end of the story. Again, it was created by Silver Zero Wisp on DeviantArt. I will leave a link 
to the story in the description. I hope you all enjoyed and have a good day. Bye-bye.